Welcome to Still in Canada, and we're glad you're here today. Today we're going to be doing starting a mash bill, and on that, we're going to select something that we really like. So we check the liquor cabinet, and you know this is one of my favorite budget uh, bourbons. It's a uh, you know Weller's Antique, and it really is quite nice. So. And the one thing about doing this, especially at Silver Fox Distilleries, we're here to experiment and to try new things. We have our laboratory release bottle, so everything we try new, we let our customers decide if they like it, if they want to keep going with it. But this is the Weller's Antique Hole. Another one I'm going to be looking at is the Eagle's Rare. So that's a, this is a weeded bourbon, the Eagle's Rare is a rye, and we're going to do a mash bill. And in this, you're going to see steps taken in order to make your mash. That's fantastic. We can't make this exact, but we can get uh, the white dog of it pretty good. Stay tuned. Welcome to Still in Canada. This is the channel of our journey from learning, exploring, and understanding how to become a distiller. We're doing this under the guidance of another distillery when we started. Now we have our own distillery. We're starting back at the beginning and we're going to start to walk through some of this. Now, one thing I do want to make clear is we do not in any way support any illegal activity. Check your country's legal rules towards distilling. Uh, in New Zealand and in Russia, it is legal to home distill. And if you're applying and moving towards getting a distillery license, follow along. This is great information. Uh, we would like you to subscribe, share us with your friends, and on the bottom there's a little bell. If you hit the notification on that, you'll be notified whenever we upload a new video. So let's get to it and see what's coming up. So this is a, a Kentucky Straight Bourbon, and it's at 53%, 53 and a half. Uh, so there's a few clues on what we're doing here. When you search online, you should be able to find the mash bill for almost anything you'd like. Uh, it's available out there. It took a while to dig up the actual recipe for this, um, but we're able to find it. Same with Eagles Rare, and you know, I'm going to write that one down as well. And yes, we have the whiteboard. We're going to be doing some math and a few other things with it. We're going to brush through it a bit. So, this is not an overly expensive whiskey. It really isn't. It's quite achievable. Um, and I really like the flavor of it. So, something with our own spin on this is what I'm going to aim at. Now, I'm not going to have the same wood they did for aging. And remember, 80%, if not a bit more, of the flavor that's in this bottle comes from processes other than distilling, other than the mash. So what, you, what it's going to turn out like in the end is going to be your own personal recipe. It's your own personal uh, taste experience. But it's a good base to start with. The white dog is very good to play with. So let's get on with this and we'll uh, see what we're doing. All right, so one of the first things we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to be figuring out what grains I need to make that product. So the Weller's Antique, you know what? Let's just go with 107. So 107. We know that 70% is corn. Now there are several different styles of corn. This one in particular is a dent corn. That does make a difference on flavor, um, but dent corn is the most popular and the easiest one to get, so that's no, no issue there. 16% is wheat. And I have, uh, I have whole wheat, I'm going to run it through the, uh, well not hammer mill, but the roller mill. And we'll just break that open and, and have a rolled wheat there. And then the last 
little bit is a malted barley. So the 14% malted barley. Yeah, I don't try and read my writing. It's horrible. So we know that this is the match bill. This is what we're going after. Malted barley could be many different flavors. So, you know, it's uh, depending on what you want and what your flavor is. One thing I'll give you a hint on, when I went looking for and went through all, it was actually the beer uh, place to get greens. And I actually had a little sniff of the uh, Wellers. And you can actually pick out some of the flavors in there, some of the, the greens. And as I was going through all the barley uh, bins, I was actually to zero in on one that I thought was quite close. It's a standard uh, malted barley, so uh, we're going to go with that. So let me clean this up a bit, and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I've cleaned this up a bit, and you should be able to read that pretty good. Yep. So when I do up my recipes, I kind of work backwards a little bit. I work from what I know, and then go back. So I know that I'm not going to do a full fermenter or a full mash. I'm just going to do a half of one because I'm experimenting to see which flavors I want to start putting into the barrel for aging. So I'm going to do a 500 liter batch. That's pretty much the last time you're going to see metric, although I'm Canadian. So that comes into 131.56. Five seven gallons. That's the size of the mash I want. You can adjust this to any size you want. Whatever size mash gun you have, it's all done in ratios, so you're going to be able to adjust it easily. So that I know. I'm going to work back from that. Now from there, what I also need to know is what are my greens. So. I've got corn, wheat, and barley. That's malted barley too, so we'll just add that. Each one of these has a, a different specific gravity. Um, so like the corn here, the, the dang corn I'm using is 1.036 for the specific gravity. So if you don't know what the gravities are, what you can do is look up, go on Google, look that up. When you find it, it just print out the list and, and keep it forever. This is going to give you the specific gravities of all your seeds and all your grains. So that is a reference you need to have. Google it, you'll find it easily. So I know that what my corn is, my wheat is pretty close to the same thing, and my malted barley is a touch higher. So I know that at 1.036, I can justify just putting them all at 1.036 and do my calculations from that. But that's at 100% conversion. That's where you can convert everything. And you know, I have gotten there, but I typically allow myself a little extra. So I'm gonna give all three a value of 1.034. So if I work that, I can do my math with that number. And that's close enough. You know, give or take on the conversion, I may get a point or two higher, may get a point or two lower. Doesn't matter. Which comes to our next spot, and this ties into last week is we're going to now look at what specific gravity are we going to aim at. So as you said, as I said last week, I'm looking between 1.078 to 1.085. So for this batch, I'm basically going to go for 1080. That's what I want to calculate to. That's what I want my mash to. And that's because I'm going to be using a yeast in this that's readily available and has a lower tolerance for alcohol. So over 10%, the alcohol in my mash will become toxic to the yeast that's in there. So I could step it up. I can go with an EC118 uh, champagne yeast or, or, or even a turbo yeast. I could do all that. 
I tend to use that in more of a vodka or something I'm stripping the flavors out of because I really don't like the off flavors I'm getting from a higher sugar content or a higher alcohol content mash. So I typically stay around the 1.080 or lower, 1.078 is ideal for me. Um, it, it's always turned out well for me for the flavors. And that's what we're after. For me, I'm after the flavors to get as close to that as I can. So I'm not gonna stress my yeast out. This is what we're aiming for. This is the final weight I'm after. This is what I'm going to say each of my grain is specific gravity. So if I do the multiplication out, then what I know is that per gallon of water, which is why we put this here, I need 2.35 pounds a grain per one gallon of water. That makes it easy. All right, so I'm doing 131.57, and I did the math earlier, so I'm just gonna write this down. I don't have a calculator, and I'm not doing it off the top of my head. Uh, I did do a little bit of prep work today. So, basically, my weight that I'm looking, gonna be looking for for total grain weight, my total grain weight, is going to be 309 pounds and 18 ounces. 19. That's my total weight for greens. To get my mash, to get that specific gravity. I will likely be a bit higher on my specific gravity, and we'll see when I do it. Because you'll see that reading as well. Not, not in this video, but in the next one. So, what am I going to uh, do? Well, now I'm gonna do, you know, just multiply this by the percentage. So the 70% corn means I need, you know, and once again, 2.35 pounds per gallon. So how much corn do I need? 216 pounds per gallon. 216 pounds of corn. Now, I'm also going to be using flaked. Why? Because I don't have to run that through my mill. It's opened up quite a bit. It's already been pre-gelatinized, so when I go to go do my mash, I don't have to run my mash up to almost a boil just to you know, soften this thing up and, and break it open so we can get at all, everything. It's already been steamrolled. And the neatest part about that is, this is far cheaper per bag than it is to get a full, full curdle. It's even cheaper than a cracked. So, it saves me having to run up. Highest temperature I have to go now is 156 Fahrenheit. So, yeah, I'm gonna go with that. Now, on the level bond scale, if you look at that specific gravity scale, this is going to have a little bit of a higher reading for specific gravity. Um, but that's fine. I'm just gonna stick with this calculation just to get me close enough. You can easily get to exactly what you want by doing the numbers closer. So I need 49.46 pounds a week. And this is going to be, I'm getting this cracked. I know I'm not. That's not coming cracked. That's coming as a whole. I'm gonna have to run that through my uh, roller mill and just do it as a cracked. So on the wheat, we know that the wheat, um, we, we have a really good handle on what it is. Because this antique 107 comes from the Buffalo Trace Distillery. And the Maker's Mark and a few others are done with red wheat. So it's a red, soft wheat. All right, so we're pretty much positive that that's what is in here. And that's what we picked up. The so last one on our list is the 43.28 uh, pounds of barley. That's 
really a, a, a nosing. When you go pick up your malted barley, give the nose on certain ones and look for the one that uh, makes you happy. Um, this is the recipe. That's it. It's broken down. Hope you're able to follow through with this. I can. I'll wipe down the one for the uh, Eagles Rare, and then uh, you, I'll just hold it here and you can have a look at it, or, or pause it, and you can go through it again. But uh, yeah, you should be able to figure that out. All right, so we're back, and this is the recipe that I found for the Eagles Rare, and which is uh, it's a new one for me this year, and I really enjoyed it. So, like I say, we're trying to figure out what we're going to be barreling this year. And we're going to barrel something we enjoy. We know what we're doing for our, our scotch style. It's 100% barley. Except we're doing something really interesting with it. Is we're actually malting our own uh, barley. And we're smoking it with peat, but with Canadian peat. So it's going to have a unique flavor. And we'll see how, now unfortunately in Canada, all whiskeys must be three years plus a day in a barrel before they can be called a whiskey. So we won't really know. It's all a crapshoot up until the day we uh, start testing it. And we're not going to do that for the first couple of years because there's no sense. But at least by year three or by the end of year two, we'll know roughly what we want to do if you want to throw it into a sherry cask or something. Um, and, and we'll look at that when we get to that point. But for now, we just want to know what our white dog is. And white dog, once again, um, for me, white lightning, moonshine, is a sugar wash with greens. Now, you can do it with straight sugar and use a grain for a flavoring, but we actually take the greens, convert the starches to sugar, and then uh, use that for half the mash bill and use the sugar for the rest of the mash bill. Just to bring our specific gravities up. That gives more of a flavor to our moonshine and, and more of a body, uh, at least I feel it does. But when we're doing barreling, we want 100% grains. We want it to be, uh, you know, just straight. So, once again, Eagles Rare, very popular brand. We know that its composition is 75% corn, 10% rye, 15% malted barley. And these, we don't know if that's a dent corn or if that's a Jimmy Red or what type of corn it is. But I'm going to speculate that it is a dent corn, just a standard corn. And the rye and the malted barley. We don't know what the uh, toast is on that barley either. So we're going to stick our head in and, you know, get our smells and we know roughly what we came out with. Let's run through this quickly. I've already put all the figures on here. Now, just a minute ago when I did the Antique 107, I took a few liberties, which, you know, I do. Um, I don't want to be the exact same as this. I just want this to be a base and give me a familiarity. So on the uh, 107, when we did our calculations from liters to gallons, we just quickly put in 3.8 instead of the actual 3.78. Is it going to make a difference? Yes, it will to some degree. Um, is it going to make that much of a difference to me? Not to me. No, I take liberties with these all the time. Uh, you may be a little more particular. You may want to do that math a little closer. For me, it's not that important. So, yeah, in the comments, <laughs> if you're saying that my math is out, yeah, it probably is. Not that big a deal to me. You know, close enough is good enough on this one. Um, and the advantage of that is, I may get something interesting. I love happy mistakes. But so, once again, we're gonna. This is just experimental. We're going to know what we want, so we take the you know, 500 liters, which is half our fermenter. We've done the uh, actual multiplication, 3.78, and we come up with 132.27 gallons. So now we can work from the imperial side. We know our specific gravity, our starting gravity, is going to be 1.080. That's the ballpark we're aiming for. Do I have to exact there? I could figure it out. But I'm pretty sure that I won't get there if I figured it out exactly. So 1.080, and I'm hoping to get one or two points higher. So I know that the average, and we'll come down here quickly and have a look at this. So corn, rye, wheat, malted barley, of what I'm using. The corn is 1.037, 
The rye is 1.036, so is the wheat, the red wheat, and the malt of barley is 1.035, most likely 3.4. So that gives me the average of 1.036. So that's what I'm going to work from, just the average. Just get me in that ballpark, that's all I'm interested in. So let's go back up here. So we're using that, the average of all the grains. And when I do the division here, that works out to 2.22 pounds per gallon. So 2.22 pounds of grains per gallon of water. Lots of things still affecting that. The pH, the minerals in the water. Once again, my numbers and the final numbers are not likely to be the same but they should be close enough. So, I did my corn. Corn is 75%. That gives me 294 for the, uh, the total weight here of my grains. 75% of that, so I multiply it by 0.75, and that gives me 220 and a half pounds of corn. Do the same for the rye, 10%, 29 pounds. The malt of barley at 15% gives me 44.1 pounds. That's my recipe. So now I can go take this, weigh all this out, and figure out if I have to accommodate anything. Um, because I'm using flake corn, flake rye, and my malt of barley is going to be run through the, uh, the roller mill then I'm not going to have to take my temperatures up. I don't have to switch the corn. Because it is uh, flaked, it's already gone through steamrollers. We said that before. So I don't have to take that up to 180 some odd degrees. I just take the whole mix up to, uh, uh, these two will bring these two right up to 156 degrees. Throw in my malted barley, mix that for 90 minutes, and that should be good. Once again, I will do an iodine check. Make sure all my starches are converted to sugars. If they aren't, I will judge whether or not I'm going to give it a little more time or if I'm going to add a touch of a, a liquid amylase to it and just you know help this barley with the conversion. Not all um, mills are the same. So some of the places that do the malted barley, their processes are not the same as some other places. In a whole 50 pound bag, you know, hopefully, you know, 80 to 90 percent of that is a malted barley. Um, but there are times where we've seen where only 20 percent of that bag was probably a malted barley. So don't be afraid when you when you get there. If, you, if your uh, starches are not uh, converting, yeah, uh, there may be a reason that might be it. So a little bit of amylase doesn't hurt. So here's the recipe. Now we'll get on. All right, folks, so here's the side you don't normally get to see. Uh, it's me doing the editing of what you just watched. And I wish to, uh, I, I, while I was filming, I didn't realize that the camera was uh, adjusting its autofocus as much as it did. And I apologize for that. Uh, having the heater fan, which you can see that right up in that corner, right up there. When that turns on, it tosses heat right to where I was standing and talking. Now, it hasn't really affected me before, but it tends to uh, change the focus quite a bit today. So I apologize for that, but uh, hope you made it through to see my apology here. Let me get on and get this finished so we can get this up and you can watch. Thanks. So that's the end of part one. Uh, there will be a second part when we start to put all these grains into the, uh, the mash done and start to mix them up. And that'll be down in a few days. But this is to give you the basis of how to work up or work back from a specific final gravity that you want to start with and how to make all the grains to meet that. We do run into a couple of issues. You'll see that in the next video and we'll get everything mixed up. And I'll get this lens clean so it doesn't uh, uh, change the focus too often. Um, I have it on manual focus now, so it should be okay for at this moment. But uh, yeah, almost done this. We'll add a little bit to the end and uh, we'll get packaged up and get her up. All right. Thanks for joining me here. It's still in Canada. Stay tuned. It's great to have you along. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do so. Ring the bell. Uh, I could really use all the extra people on here uh, to support me. Once again, it's free. 
Doesn't cost you anything. Does me a world of good. All right, thanks folks. Happy distilling, we'll see you soon. And once again, in Silver Fox Distillery. And uh, we'll get this next one up and... Wow, just kind of run out of words there some days. You know, you're trying to think, you're trying to think of this as you're going and it just, it, your mind blanks out sometimes. <laughs> Blooper reels, I guess. Where the hell was I? Damn. So I'll get this finished up. We'll get her posted. We'll get to work on that second one. And we had a few surprises. Ran into a couple of issues. Um, that just I just didn't realize what was happening. So, and I'll show you what I did with the correct dam and how we worked around some of that. So, look at all that. That's 80%, 80 percent, 80 proof, or 160 proof. Oh, it's shine. That's a lot of spirits. We're gonna be blending and bottling that in two days. <laughs> 